we felt that making the exhibition absolutely special and unique was very important. And we've been asking ourselves, all the team at Sotheby's, our mantra has been, what would Freddie do? What would he say? Yeah, go for it. You've got works by Picasso, Matisse, Chagall, but at the same time you've got fun things. So you've got to have a bit of fun with it too. The big things have got to breathe, and but he was a lot of deserves a lot of respect as a collector. But you've got to have fun with it as well. Hence the moustache over our front door. When I first heard, you know, before we even went to Garden Lodge, his home, I assumed that much of the collection would be the costumes and the textiles. I didn't realize how careful a collector he was, how buying beautiful things, they often had to have a story. Everything had to have um, you know, a background. It had to speak to him on many different levels, whether that was from his own experiences in his own background, or whether because it was a work of something that keyed into a costume perhaps he wore, or you know, a moment in his professional career. For sale and not in the museum. We've had that question. Um, yeah. Actually, when you listen to the music and you The, the, the piano is like the nuclear reactor within the collection, isn't it? That's the, that's the point, that's the source code, that's where it all comes from. And we know that he loved it, so treating it with respect has been absolutely at the forefront of our minds. Um, making sure that it's visible and that people can come in and see it and see the tool of his trade, his easel and his palette, that's mega, yeah. Come into the exhibition, put your um, iPhone on, your ear pods in, find the tune and play it and just follow those lyrics with your finger through the, through the case and it's, it's quite amazing because you can see the emphasis he's placing on particular words where he's underlined something, it's really cool. Yeah. Well, I think importantly, as I said, Freddie is a collector of note in his own right in so many fields that we sell. So Japanese art, I think there'll be serious collectors who recognize that there's a standalone pictures and prints and bits of lacquer and porcelain in their own right. But I hope fans come in as well. You don't have to buy something, but just come and see our exhibition. It is glorious. And estimates start, I think the cheapest thing's 20 pounds and they go up to 2 million pounds. So there's something for everyone from every department and from every aspect of Freddie's life. Yes, yeah, we go and see. My thesis was on. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, my graduation. Well, so I'm a big fan of the city. So, Freddie first went to Japan in 1975. He went in total with Queen seven times. Um, Freddie's jukebox was in his kitchen. It was beside the kitchen table. Comes down for his coffee in the morning, 
hits the button and you've got a wonderful Motown or a rock and roll, you know. It's a 1941 Wurtlitzer, so nearly 100 years old, and it still works. It's called the Peacock. Isn't that brilliant? If Freddie's going to have a jukebox, it's got to be called the Peacock. Thank you. 